Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I'm your host, Michael Crane. Today we're going to work on uh, the Cisco lag testing. And if you have not seen the setup uh, for this testing, it's in uh, video number 25. It's, uh, it's quite long. I think it's almost an hour long. Uh, so I'm not going to go over a lot of the setup of this. Uh, you can watch that other video. Um, because I have a feeling this video is going to be quite lengthy as well. So, uh, but we'll tr I'll, if I need to, I'll maybe I'll break it up or something. But uh, anyway, um, I kind of redrew our test bed drawing from video number 25, and and uh, and I wanted to show. This is basically the test bed layout, and I wanted to show where the the iperf instances were running. So. Um, uh, so I'm running uh, a server and a client iperf uh, instance on each one of the MX2s, all right, and then I'm running um, three instances or six instances, uh, three servers and three clients on the Zotac box, and uh, and these are all. Um, these links are all 100 base T links going up through the 3750. Oh, and they, these are a Cisco uh, switch and router. And uh, this is a gig. So, so what's going to happen is, is we're going to fire off uh, from a client to a server on each one. So, and these numbers down here, these are the port numbers that, that it's running on. See, so you got a uh, Basically, was a socket it is a IP address port combination. So, for example, uh, this MX2 right here was going. Its uh, IP is 192.168.10.16, right? And port 8888. Eight, eight. And and so this. It, just and so here's the port numbers for these guys, and I basically matched them up, and you know, so I could group them together. Is we're going to uh, initiate a stream from the client up through the lag to the server. Okay, so so red is I'll just say red is up. For lack of a better term, some people will call it northbound, I guess. Um, yeah, maybe that we should we should do that. We should call it north and north and south because that's kind of uh, um, an industry term. I don't know who made it up. So we've got this will be north, north. South. Okay. So, um, so then we're also gonna, and, and so we're gonna be using a UDP for this testing, and UDP is a connectionless um, protocol, which means we're basically just gonna be shooting packets this way, and if they get dropped, they don't get, they get dropped. There's no retransmission. There, there's nothing. Uh, and there's no expected response either. So I, we're just going to start a one-way stream of UDP packets going from the client to the server, and and then we're going to start another one from this client all the way down to that server. And you, and the rest are the same. It's just. I'm not going to draw them all out. You get the idea. Um, so, and that that way we're going to we'll have kind of our duplex um, uh, string. Uh, the, one of the main things we want to test is is the load balancing. And uh, if you remember from the the um, uh, 
uh, the video where we set up this lag right here, we set the traffic going northbound into the 3750. It is uh, supposed to uh, load balance um, uh, by the originating MAC address. So we'll just call it OMAC. Okay? So it's going to look at the MAC address of this port right here. Alright? And, and it's going to load balance across the, the different links inside the lag based on the originating uh, MAC address. Uh, that's going northbound, right? And, and so what we expect to see from these guys is, is we expect it to put each one of the MX2s on different links. At least that's the theory. So we're gonna, that's one of the things we want to test. Um, the other thing we want to test it, with load balancing is uh, so load balancing uh, coming back this way uh, through the 3845 is going to be uh, load balancing based on the destination MAC. Let's call it the DMAC. And, and there's a couple reasons for doing that. One, um, uh, this right here, the, the 3845 was a layer 3 switch, or a layer 3 router. And so it's not going to know. I mean, it could probably figure out where the originating MAC was, but but it will know because this is this is all layer two right here um, at these interfaces. So it will have arced and have in its arc table these MAC addresses for these different boxes down here. Um, so um, so the theory is is okay. Well, it should on the southbound traffic. It should do the exact same thing. It should just load balance across each one. So, and we're going to test that to make sure that that, that works. So, uh, and uh, I believe, I believe this is default, this originating Mac, and this one we had to set. So, uh, so we're going to test that and see how that works. Okay, so the next thing on our list of things to test is going to be capacity. So we've got this, uh, we've got three uh, 100 meg, um, uh, links in, in our lag. So that gives us, uh, should have 300 megabits per second, bits per second in our lag. Now, the way Cisco lags work is they, they only uh, load balance um, uh, by stream, which means, let's say these were gig links right here, and, and these were just 100, 100 meg links, and you sent, uh, you know, 300 meg or 200 meg of traffic from here to this lag right here, and it was just in one stream, in other words, from one iPerf, oops, sorry, from one iPerf client to an iPerf server. So, the, the, and I believe it's in the, the, the specification is, is it will not split, split that traffic across two or more links. It all has to be able to fit on one link. So it's basically going to drop everything but 100 megs going up. So we, we know that. So uh, that's, that's why, you know, testing it with a 300 meg should be sufficient to test the lag. And, uh, and another thing that we want to check too is, is uh, Okay, so what happens if you start two? Let's say we, we put another iPerf client right here on a different port and put another iPerf server up here and, and start a second stream from the same Mac. So now we have two northbound streams. Is it going to try to stick it all in one pipe or is it going to be, is it going to know it's a second set of stream or a second stream? And stick it on another pipe, and um, and so we need to test that, and make sure that's going to work work correctly for us. If not, we might have to come up with a different uh, load balancing scheme. But uh, this is good to start with, 
and this is why we do testing so we can kind of work out the work out the kinks. Can we get uh, close to 300 megs on on this lag? All right, we need to make sure that because uh, there's a lot of moving parts here. If you think about it, you got the lag, which is uh, I think that's called port channel or ether channel or both, and the 3845 and the port channel and the 3750 and and then you got the VLAN interface on both of them and then you've got all the individual link interfaces so there's a there's a lot of moving parts in this and it's real easy to, to goof it up and and uh, so we don't want we want to make sure that our new 300 meg lag is actually going to pass 300 megs worth of traffic so we need to make sure we can do that as well uh, uh, we want to make sure that that we don't get any uh, unusual buffering or queuing of of traffic, just normal traffic. I'm not talking about overloaded traffic, but just normal traffic. We need to make sure that it doesn't buffer or queue or do anything funny like that, um, because that'll cause a bunch of jitter and delay in our tra in our packets, and we don't want that. So one last thing I wanted to talk about is. Uh, is how I grouped uh, all these all these sessions in BYOBU. Um, if you remember from the last video, we're using BYOBU because we can have multiple windows inside of one SSH window, uh, and you can see why. If we had to open an SS window, an SSH window for each one of these. We have uh, you know 12 windows, not including the router and the uh, and the switch. So the way I grouped them is, is I've got all six of these windows in one BYOBU window, and then I've got all these in another BYOBU window, and then we just have regular SSH sessions into the into the switch and the router. And I just kind of wanted to show you that to see to show you how it was grouped together visually. Uh, so when we get on the computer and I'm and I'm clicking around showing you, you're not confused on what's going on there.